logging is essentially the process of taking an instrument package that can go inside the borehole and make all sorts of physical measurements in the borehole. Basically, the advantage of borehole logging is data from in-situ environment. Sometimes core interval is missing, so logging data can compensate in the missing interval, uncalled interval. Then we construct our, our borehole information, including all physical property, mythology, and uh, borehole environment also. We measure a number of physical properties, you know, basic properties of the of the rock and sediment, like natural radioactivity, density, electric resistivity, porosity. And there's a few measurements that instead attempt to make an image of the borehole wall. There is a set of measurements that use resistivity images. It's an image that tells you how resistive different layers and different features are. And there's another one that instead is based on, a, on an acoustic measurement. You see the actual piece of equipment that takes this measurement right here. And this will be at the end of a long pipe. The important part is here, it's called the transducer. It emits an ultrasonic pulse that comes out, travels, hits the borehole wall and bounces back. And the kind of data we get are these. I'm going to show them to you by magic, pulled out of the borehole, are images like that. The color in the image represents the radius of the borehole. Normally, when we drill a borehole, the borehole looks a little bit like this, just a cylinder. But in some places, we find instead the borehole ends up looking like that. And so, as you can see, there are these two grooves on opposite sides. It turns out that this happens in places where there's a strong force directed like that. And here we are at the boundary between two of the big tectonic plates. There are very strong horizontal forces, and so we suspect we will find these kinds of borehole shape. And the important thing is that the orientation of this tells us in which direction the force is directed. So to understand the whole process of subduction zone, uh, one deep hole is not enough. So we need to drill shallow transect drilling to understand the whole picture of subduction zone. During the cruise, I collect the data, then analyze on the ship and bring back to the, our country and reprocess and analyze and interpret and combine with core data, improve our knowledge about the seismogenic zone and erosional margin. So for example, the work that I do is, is very useful once you put it together with what the cores are saying. And there's a whole spectrum. There's some measurements that can only be taken on cores. There's some measurements that can only be taken with the instruments I have. And then there's a whole middle where they both can be taken, and by looking at them in different ways, you can learn a lot more than by taking them in, in isolation. And that is certainly true of, of, of everything that, that goes on on the ship. We have very limited time on ship, so many different disciplinary people should come together and make team. Teamwork is very good to proceed science. So many, many different kind of people should come together and make a very strong team and very interactive discussion. That's the advantage of marine science because we are on the ship. And maybe coarser grains. Today there was a meeting about one of the sites and those are great meetings because you have people from completely different specialties that discuss with others what they have found. To that point, obviously, the studies will continue, and it's a great forum for exchanges of ideas, you know, opinions, suggestions, and whatnot. And again, you know, the understanding of what has been going on at a particular drill site really comes from putting everything together. If anything.
So I sailed on Joy Destination seven times. Always exciting about the science, excited about the people. So we always have a good team to proceed science. And the shipmate, shipmate is forever for my science life.